In this episode of the IT Experts podcast, I'm going to give you five key steps to help you navigate your MSP through the current economic crisis. Welcome to the IT Experts podcast, the only podcast to help MSPs scale to one million. And if already there, get to five and go fast. At the end of the day, isn't it all about building a business that works for you rather than you for it? I hope you enjoy the show. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the IT Experts podcast. Now, today I'm repurposing some amazing content um, at the time of this podcast going out. This is the structure and the discussion that myself and Tracy Pound from CompTIA and Maximity Limited um, had at the um, CompTIA EMEA conference in um, October, early November 2022. Tracy asked me to provide a bit of thought leadership around what I think we need to be focusing on as business owners and as MSPs specifically with the current economic crisis. So I've put together five key points here and I want to talk to you about them today. And I want you to take away some actions from this. So whatever you're doing, make sure you've got a pen and paper at the end of the show because we've got some actions for you to help you to guide yourself mentally through what's going to be going on in the next couple of years. Guide yourself, I suppose, physically in the business side of things keep you on plan, keep you on track, make sure you're still, business is still alive at the end of this next period of turmoil. And it's really simple and they're really straightforward areas, but I want to just bring it all together today. And I thought while we were putting this fireside chat um, structure together, I thought, let's make it into a podcast because this is it's pretty golden stuff. Look, you don't have to be silly to see on social and everything going on. We've got massive world change going on with the politics. We've got a new prime minister every single month at the moment, cost of living increase and all of that great stuff and the war in Ukraine and all the other horrible things that are going on in the world. And I'm not damning down any of that at the moment because it is a period of change. And I think the thing that we need to really remember and really kind of recognise is the fact that been having the ability to be resilient to change and having the ability to be able to adapt and move yourself and adjust yourself and adjust the business as change outside your control happens is really, really important. I was only saying to Stuart earlier on today, um, I actually go, you know, when I used to work for, for Virgin Media years ago, back in the day, and um, I got made redundant eight times in eight years. And the reason for that was because the business changed. It started off as a design company, then we moved into construction of the cable network, then we moved into installation, cabling, commissioning, sales, customer service. And every year they'd change it. And every year with people would come in and people would go and different types of people. So I'm really, really au fait with, with change and with business change and, and, and being able to adapt really quickly. And I think not meaning to insult, you know, a good population of this podcast all in one go. The way that the millennials and the way that anyone from kind of like 20, probably up to maybe in your early 30s, something like that, um, thinks about the world is very different to the old people in the world like me and Stuart, um, you know, who's, who's age begins with a five. And the reason for that is because we've just lived a different life, you know, and I think this is a really, really key point that we understand what's going on. Everything's disposable. You know, I need dinner. I just go on to Deliveroo. Well, I don't, but my wife will go mad. But, you know, you want Deliveroo. I want Amazon. I want it there tomorrow. I don't want to go to the shop and buy it. I want to go on holiday. I want to book it on my mobile phone. Everything's so instant. And when you've got times of you know, change that's going on right now, you know, economic, everything's going up in price. And we need to make sure that we're kind of responsible enough is what I'm saying. We need to make sure that we're responsible and we're grown up enough to put our big boy leadership pants on or big girl leadership pants on, whoever it is listening to this, and make some strategic decisions, make some strategic plans so that you can weather this storm and you can bring your team along with you. You can bring your clients along with you. You can grow as leaders and you know we can survive this together because do you think question out there warren buffett is worried about the economic crisis he is rubbing his hands waiting for something to buy waiting to make his make his purchase waiting for someone to to do something so he can make more money all the big money in the world is always made in times of depression and recession um, and everywhere is an opportunity. I remember the day we all got locked down, you know, in uh, 2020. I went out for a walk with a dog and I went to the, one of the busy streets in Luton. Um, a busy, it was a busy, you know, through road. There was no one on it. And it, and it was like really eerie. And I sat there and I saw, thought, I did sit there, I was standing there. And I sort of thought, think about all the opportunities we've got coming ahead. 
think about all the things that are going to change in the world. And if we can adjust and adapt and maximize some of those opportunities like now, wow, what great place this would be. So look, I've got some five steps I want to talk about. And the first one is about your mindset. You open up any single you know, media outlet, you know, Facebook, social media, news, doom and gloom, doom and gloom world. Everyone's going to die. No one's going to have any money. No one's going to have any heating. No one's got anything to eat. Um, and if you're not careful, you probably end up, you know, causing yourself a bit of harm if you're not careful. And, and what we need to do here is we need to look at a couple of things. Number one is the macro environment. So what's going on in the world around you? Um, but when you're making any decisions or when you're applying any of this, Base it on evidence, okay? Don't make any decisions because Karen in Facebook says, oh, you've got to do this. You can't go and shop at Lidl because it's too expensive. Well, you can't go and do this. Well, you can't. Make sure that every single thing, you know, when you're when you're looking at, you know, information or someone's giving you some data, get it based on evidence. Uh, one of the guys I used to work with um, back in the day um, said to me once, always you know triangulate any data that you get and i said what do you mean by that he said we get three points of reference so you've got your point of reference that's one does anybody else agree with this yeah in actual fact so and so my business partner agrees with this okay does anybody else agree with this yeah one of my clients thinks it's a great idea right so you've got three people there who have thought about it had a little thought uh, thought process around it and now i've decided that that particular idea was a good idea so try and triangulate it and be sensible and, and be try and be level-headed and really self-aware about what's going on you know in that environment the, the other one you know around this is about the micro environment what's going on around you and focus on things that you can control okay it's very easy to get in overwhelm it's very easy to get in stress because the prime minister's just changed oil prices have gone up there's a war going on and it's caused an energy crisis etc etc but what's going on around you and and another thing that that someone said to me a little while ago when you get into stress and when you get into worry and you start getting in a bit of overwhelm is what you're worrying about today, are you going to worry about it in a year's time? Is it still going to be relevant? Is it still going to be impactful in my life? Is it still going to be something that's going to be you know, needed in my head in a year's time? And if it isn't, then try and work out how you can get it out of your head. You know, maybe do a bit of meditation or a bit of, you know, planning or just try and get a bit of time out, a bit of mindfulness. Because remember, throughout the pandemic, you come out of the pandemic as MSPs and you're the complete technology partner. OK, the pandemic was interesting. Most MSPs did pretty well out of the pandemic. But anything goes wrong with your tech, you know, the MSP is going to get phoned up, whether it's Wi-Fi, telephones, PCs, hardware, whatever it might be. People in the world now look at MSPs and IT support companies as the tech provider, regardless of whether or not you do it in this stack. So you need to get ready to, to again be there to support. And as I mentioned, you know, just be, don't be swayed by following the crowd on media, on the social media and the, and the negativity in that. It's just, it's not healthy. You know, get some positive th thoughts going. Think about how can you do something rather than how can't you do something. But getting your mindset in a clear space, getting a positive attitude. Yes, it's a little blip, couple of years, then we're going to be back on again or a year or whatever it might be. We're going to back on again. Look for the opportunities. Look for the loopholes. Look for the way that you can create, you know, the another great adage is, you know, follow the look, look at what the crowd are doing and then go and do the opposite. Look at all of those opportunities right now and open your mind up and be around positive people as well. Most important thing. So the second thing is around stepping up as a leader, you know, in the business. And at the Growth Hub, we talk about three types of leaders, We talk with leadership. We talk about the personal leadership, which is about your vision, what success, and what does winning look like for you individually as a leader. It might be having a bit of time off. It might be, you know, getting the business ready to um, have a big growth spurt. It might be that you want to sell. It might be you want to spend some more time with your family or give back to charity. But what does personal leadership look like? Shadow of the leader, really important. Then we've got strategic leadership, you know, where are you taking the business? It's like cultural leadership, you know, the vision, the values. Who are you? What does, you know, who is living the company values? What's going on in terms of the growth planning? You know, where is the business going? We're looking for you to be an inspiring leader at this time. And then team leadership. Is your team ready for change? Particularly if you've got remote workers, particularly if you've got, you know, a lot of young staff working there. Make sure you're connecting them to the vision, the mission and the values and what you're doing in the business. The thing with the pandemic is, is that it affected certain amount of certain number of people. I'm, I'm talking economically now. I'm not talking from a health point of view. But thing about a recession or an economic downturn is it's not only going to affect businesses, 
but it's also going to affect your staff and their home lives and their families and their families' families and their friends and everybody around them. And now's the time to make sure that you're cultivating that culture of belonging. You're building great teams. You've got the right people in the right roles who are going to enable you to scale the business through a through a pandemic or survive the business through a pandemic. But also we've got to spend a little bit more time as well thinking about well-being, thinking about working from home. People might be struggling from working from home, thinking about mental health you know, situations and mental health issues that could be hidden. And now's the time, you know, you've really got to hanker down on your team. We've really got to make sure that we know who they are. We make sure that they're we're aware of them, you know, do the disc profile and be really self-aware, understand, you know, most techie business owners who are high S and high C on the uh, disc scale, if you don't know what the disc scale is, we did a podcast on it a little while ago, go and listen to that, um, are fearful of change. They're fearful of disruption. They don't like things that change out of their control. And bearing in mind that probably 99% of the people who are listening to this podcast are from a techie background, that's pretty scary, isn't it? So let's make sure that we're really aware of these people. Let's make sure that we really, really understand what's going on in their world and not just at work, what's going on at home. Their parents might have lost their job. You know, that little office they've sat in for the last two years working from home, just like my son's rooted in my office at home happy, not happy. If their parents lost their job and they lost their house, what happens to that, you know, to that, that working from home environment? What happens to the ability for that person to pay their mortgage or their rent? So really go deep in this. Let's, let's just really crank up the leadership styles and let's just make sure that we're really aware of, 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 you know, personal strategic and the team leadership here. You know, the third point I just want to run through is about your business. Okay. So, the structure of the business. Is it still flat? If the business is still flat in terms of your organization, so everybody reports to you, it's not a scalable, it's not a scalable methodology. It's not a scalable structure. It needs to be. And even though we're going on to an economic downturn, I mentioned before, you know, Warren Buffett's not sitting there just starting to cry to count his billions of pounds. He's going to be looking for opportunities. If you go out and look for a load of opportunities, how's your business going to scale? How's your business going to grow? We've actually talked to clients in the Growth Hub here who sometimes say to us, um, oh, my God, I just can't take any more work on. I've got so much work at the moment, which completely reinfor- reinforces our point of the fact that most people don't need sales and leads. Most people need operational efficiency, and then you can build in. So I want you to, to think about how scalable and how ready for growth your business is, because you might all of a sudden appeal to a different market and have an absolute influx of work. You know, cash flow making sure you're getting paid, making sure you're paying what you, you know, you should be paying to keep up the, um, keep up the credit and all of that kind of good stuff. But cash flow is about communication. All right. If you're struggling to pay your bills, talk to people. When you don't talk to people and you shove your head in the sand and you don't worry about it, that's when the big guns come out and you start getting yourself in a bit of trouble, but talk to people about it. You know, you could also be in a situation where you're in an M&A situation where you could be looking at hang on a minute there's a few opportunities here either we might be able to buy another msp or someone might want to buy us i've had enough of it now you know have a think about what a good merger and acquisition would look like have a think about what a bad one would be what do you need to do to increase the the profitability and the price that you get for your msp um again plugging my own show here go back and listen to the podcast we did with daniel welling all about how to increase your and how to increase your profitability of your msp and also there's a couple of other shows there about um, buying and selling an msp and, and what you need to do there great great information there from daniel so think about that but also have a think about risks and again this is about putting your big boy or girl pants on risk registers for the bigger businesses around us what are we going to do if our key tech leaves? What are we going to do if our key client leaves? What are we going to do if we can no longer get in the office? What if we have a cyber attack? What if, what if, what if, what if? What are those risks, the client risks, the internal risks? And create a risk register and just think about it and have a chat with your team and your business about how you're going to mitigate some of those risks to protect you from any long-term harm. So step four is all around your relationships. The amount of people that we've spoken to over the last couple of months who don't do proper account management. The relationships with your client are so important. You've spent years and years and years building your business up, building great relationships. Don't ignore them. 
Make sure you're doing QBRs, TBRs, whatever you want to call them. Make sure you've got a scalable process that other people can operate if you're not in the business or you're out or you may be on holiday, you might be doing some strategic work, landing some new clients. But make sure that there's no bottlenecks in that process. Make sure you're reviewing. Make sure you understand what's going on in their world during the recession and during the, the economic downturn. Share with them how your solutions solve their business problems. How are you helping them? And remember that your innovation in your business, because you're a techie and you want everything to be plugged in and all the switches working and everything are working nicely, might not necessarily be your customer's innovation. Your customer might not need. Microsoft 365 might be an amazing innovation to many, many businesses who are working manually. And now's the time people are going to be starting to reduce their staff, reduce their costs, and the businesses have still got to operate but they can operate better with technology, potentially. I'm not saying we need to go out and start laying everybody off and cause even more unemployment, but where can your technology slide into a business that's struggling to help it to become a really quick ROI, to be cheaper and more cost-effective than those employees who are not very well efficient? And, you know, computers don't take days off and they're generally not that sick very often. But make sure you're really resonating and understanding how their business is going to be affected. If you don't go and talk to your clients, you're never going to understand how they're going to be affected by the downturn. So make sure that you've got that all, all buttoned down and, and, and all in place. Account management process is absolutely essential right now. If one of your clients, one of your biggest clients leaves you in the next six or eight, nine, 12 months, whatever it might be, it's going to be harder to replace them because people are going to be scared about spending money. I don't need an IT support company. Nothing went wrong for the first two years. I'm absolutely fine. They go without an MSP. They go without backup. They go without any any support. Bang, they get hacked. Business goes down. That's not a great place to be. If we can avoid that from happening, then let's make sure we get that message out there. And also focus and test on your customer experience. Just because they're hitting the little button at the bottom of your customer thermometer when you send them an email, are they really happy? You know, grade them, scale them, make sure that you're giving them a bit of love, make sure that you're 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 living up to your expectations and you're not just assuming that everybody's because there's no fires going on that everybody's happy. Because it's at times like this, and as I was saying to Tracy when we were preparing for this, if one of your clients leaves you or one of your employees leaves you and resigns, shouldn't be a surprise. Should never be a surprise. Because you should always be having one-to-ones with your staff. You should always be having one-to-ones with your clients, finding what's going on. Are you happy? What are we doing well? What are we not doing well? What do we need to improve on? What can we do about it? So make sure that you really, you know, spend some time focusing on your relationships as well. So the final point, uh, point five, is all about your performance, improving your business performance, having proper KPIs, having a proper targeted set of, you know, measurable activities that flow through your business. How are you going to achieve your numbers? Are you going to stand, plan to stand still over the next couple of years or are you going to absolutely you know, go for growth? Knowing your numbers, making sure you've got a, a, an accurate cash flow, absolutely critical. You know, you might put people onto monthlies. You might need to go onto monthlies rather than annual fees or whatever it might be. But once you've got your cash flow planned out, you'll know what type of ride you've got ahead. You'll know where the gap is. You'll put focus into closing that gap. And then you'll make sure that you will get everything in place to make sure that you can make a great decision. You've got really good information and data to make a great decision because you know your numbers. And just by knowing your numbers, you're going to be far, far ahead of many, many, many businesses uh, in the UK. And this is why 80% of businesses just simply fail because they just don't know their numbers. And then the last point on here is audit, test, audit, test, audit, communicate. You know, now's the time to be sharing, communicating with your staff, communicating with your teams, telling them what's going on, telling them how, you know, we're going to be look what the things we're going to be doing to help survive the downturn. What are we going to be focusing on? What are we not going to be focusing on? And communicate with your staff because then they'll feel engaged. You'll get that engagement. You'll get that culture and you'll get everything all nice and built into place on there. So look, top takeaways. I want you to spend some time and nurture and develop, engage, build great teams. Make sure your people are there. Make sure that they've got your back. Make sure that they're all aligned. They know everything that's going on or as much as you, you need to let them 
you know what's going on confidentially wise and make sure that you're building that great team because if you are going to scale in the next couple of years which is a pretty good chance you can if you can't then the reason for that is probably in your mindset to start with go back to the beginning of the podcast listen to it all over again but build great teams number two i want to go super super deep with your clients get to know them personally get to know their environment care about them own the relationship and really, really share with them everything that you do on a business level, not a technology, a business level that you can help them out. Build that relationship, build that rapport, build that trust much deeper than ever before. And finally, put a plan together. Just put a plan together with your team. Get some accountability, set some regular meetings, tell people this is what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, and do what you say you're going to do. My number one tip for being an effective leader, do what you say you're going to do and get your accountability and get that all in place. So look, I hope you enjoyed this show. It's a bit of a rant, to be fair, um, to be honest, but it's a really important thing. If you just take on those five key points, we'll summarize them all in the show notes you are going to be in a much stronger position. You're going to be in a much better position to you know, navigate through the choppy little roads we've got ahead and the seas and whatever you want to call it um, ahead. But, you know, remember, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're probably right. And on that note, I'm going to leave you to it. You enjoy the rest of your day and I look forward to catching up with you soon. Take care now. So I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, I'd love it if you could leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. If you want to learn more about how to take your MSP to a million, or if you're already there, go faster, then come and join Stuart Warwick and myself in the Scale with Confidence Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. You go and enjoy the rest of your day, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.